Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with the big JB. What is up? How What's up, dude? Why are we here today? We are here because we are doing a second Steam Hidden Gems because there are so many stinking hidden gems out there. I mean, this time, I don't know about you, but there was a long list that our viewers sent in last time. Yeah. It was really hard to choose. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a great part about it, right? Is right. That, that you guys help us make these videos, which oh, I yeah. love. Yeah, absolutely. And in this video, we're actually going to pare it down slightly to just, what, five games? Right, yeah, it was five. Yeah, yeah. but these games, were a blast to play. I, my games especially were hilarious. Yeah, so. and I loved mine. They were great. Yeah. All right, so you're going to take the first one. All right, All right, let's check it out. Never Alone by Upper One Games is a great puzzle platformer. Just by looking at the screenshots and the trailers, you can tell that it's based on Inuit culture. But its specific Inuit culture is the Inupiat, which I had never heard of before. You play a little Inupiat girl named Nuna and her Arctic fox companion. I love games where you have a little animal companion. I, I love that. I think that's fantastic. And I like games that have a female protagonist, especially one that can get in there and kick ass. I love that too. This game has the animal companion and it has the female protagonist, but this is not some strong Laura Croft-ish woman. This is a strong female character in the sense that this is a little girl trying to figure out what happened to her family. When you come back to your village from being out exploring, you've discovered that there's some man who has set fire to the village and has kidnapped people. Now it's interesting because in the art in the game, the man doesn't look just like the representations of other men. So there's something sort of troll-ish about him. So you come back, you're trying to figure out this mystery, and you can tell that this little girl is scared. You can tell that she has these emotions, and yet she's gonna be strong and she's gonna be brave because she's gotta find out what happens to her family. It's a cooperative game in the sense that you have to play either uh, Nuna or the Arctic Fox Companion. And you can switch those controls if you're doing single player. And if you have a, another controller, two people can play and each take control of one of the other characters. It is a side-scrolling platformer, um, but it doesn't have some of the traditional collect all these elements to it. What it does have is as you play through, you encounter these owls every once in a while. And what they do is they unlock a special video segment that has to do with the culture that that part of the game is based on. And so you're not only enjoying this game that's set in a unique environment and set in something that most of us don't have exposure to, but you also have the opportunity to go deeper and learn more about this culture that inspires the game and it's just a really neat touch point um, for those of us who play through the game to enjoy where this came from a lot of us know about Greek mythology and Roman mythology and some of the other mythologies that have become so popular but to have uh, a game that's built on a culture or a mythology that we don't know about that we don't have exposure to is really a nice change of pace This next game is absolutely nuts, and it's called Roundabout by No Goblin. This is an open world indie driving game like no other. Although that's not 100% true, because if you're like me, it looks sort of familiar to this other Japanese game you may have seen before called Kuru Kuru Kurin. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. But anyways, a, a Japanese game that has a similar mechanic to this game, although this definitely adds even more on top of that. So what is going on here? Well, you are the driver of this constantly rotating limousine. Yeah, I know, it's really weird, but stick with me here. And basically, you need to complete different objectives. Usually that involves picking up and dropping off people or finding upgrades or collectibles for your limo. It's the picking up and dropping off part that really reminds me of Crazy Taxi. Remember that game where you drive around, pick people up, then you have like a little time limit, there be these obstacles and things like that, you have to rush across town. This is very similar to that, but there's a huge bonus, and that is this game has some of the most awesomely bad full motion video cutscenes straight out of a 90s video game. It's brilliant. Okay, kid, the name's Mickey. Mickey the Mechanic. I've never seen anyone drive like you just did at the DMV. 
Can you show me some more? I need a ride to my shop down the block. Okay, so the game is crazy and wacky, but really, how does it play? And I'm here to tell you, thankfully, this game is a total winner. For one, it's really less of a driving game and almost more of a real-time puzzle because that limo is constantly spinning. And if you run into too many things, you're gonna take damage and explode and go back to the previous checkpoint. But I like how the world is kind of open-ended. And so if you're struggling with say one path, often you can go around it and maybe find a better way to go. Also, there's a lot of power-ups that can help you as you unlock them. For instance, you'll have the ability to slow down time, very handy, and also the ability to jump and much more. If this game looks remotely interesting to you, I highly recommend it. I had a great time playing it and I laughed the whole time. Everybody loves Norse mythology. And if you like Norse mythology, then this is definitely a game worth checking out. Add on top of that, not only is it Vikings, which are freaking cool, but it is also hand-drawn, frame-by-frame animation style that carries you through the entire game, which is something that I have seen in very, very few games. Your main character is Thora, sound familiar, and she's a Viking woman who's recently died and she can't get into Valhalla. She has to impress the gods. And so on this action adventure game, you are trying to go through different levels to unlock god powers, to defeat the gods, to impress them so that you can finally enter Valhalla. As you go through those levels, you get different abilities from the gods like healing, like a shield, like deception. Does it sound like Loki, anybody? strength from Thor. There's all these different abilities that you can use and that you end up needing to employ when you go to fight the final bosses. The boss fights are really the only time that combat comes into play. Every once in a while there is some other combat scattered throughout a level but for the most part the level is about exploration, figuring out how to collect all the things you need to collect in the area, uh, and if you're a completionist like me, believe me, you spend time doing that, and then you get to the boss. The controls are very simple. Besides moving around, you have a dash. It's kind of a roll, gets you out of the way. Uh, and then you have a swing, and then there's this big chop. And then you've got the other abilities that you have that you unlock from the gods. They're just a special ability. Usually it's just something that's quick that empowers you to continue going on. Um, the fact that the art is hand-drawn animation is just stunning to look at. Even though this is an action adventure and the combat really only occurs where it's the boss battles, you kind of don't care because it's so neat to look at while you're going through it. The lack of combat is almost a relief because you just want to enjoy what you're seeing as you're moving around the levels. So it's a great game for those of you who like Vikings and like hand-drawn animation. This is incredible. Next up is Assault Android Cactus by a three-person indie team called Witchbeam. Oh man, I love twin stick shooters. And this is an indie twin stick shooter in the classic arcade tradition, but with a new coat of paint. So what is going on here? Well, you play as an intergalactic police officer stranded on a space freighter that is under attack from robot workers. Yes, the game has a plot. Not that you really need to care about that, but you know, it, it's there and it has really cute characters and it's got fun and witty dialogue. It's actually kind of cool, but the important thing here is that this game has 25 stages that span the entire ship. And what's really interesting about those stages is that they're pretty varied. So for instance, you're gonna deal with shifting floors, there are stages that move. Also in some of them, like the lighting will just like turn off in the middle of it. And all of a sudden <laughs> you're just kind of like going by the, by the flashlight on the front of your weapon. It's pretty cool. There's also five massive bosses to deal with in this game and they're pretty tough. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. This whole game is pretty tough. It's gonna kick your butt. But the good news is that if you pay attention, you can usually make some progress in this. Often when I died, it was because I wasn't paying attention to the patterns or I wasn't worrying about my battery, which is always depleting. So you have to constantly pay attention to your energy or maybe I wasn't switching weapons like I needed to. But it's definitely a ton of fun. And if you like twin stick shooters, check it out. Everything's dead. Welcome to Lone Tree, my friend. Y'all like the Wild West? Y'all like guns? 
Y'all like beautiful matadors that fling blades at you from across the dusty courtyard? This game is for you, partner. Secret Ponchos is easily in my top five favorite games right now. It is such a fun game to play. The problem that I run into sometimes is how to describe this to people, so bear with me and please, before you pass judgment on any one of my descriptions, let me finish. Because sometimes people start to glaze over. I'll say a certain word and they'll be like, oh, I don't like that genre. So here's the deal. It is kind of like a combination of a fighting game like Street Fighter, a first-person shooter like Team Fortress 2, and a MOBA like Dota 2 or Heroes of the Storm. Don't write off any one of those things, okay? So the fighting game aspect of it, you've got two people who are playing some of their favorite characters going head to head with skills and stuff that they've mastered. And there is that neat kind of back and forth on how am I gonna avoid, dodge, attack, all that other stuff. Definitely in Secret Ponchos. Team Fortress 2, let's use that as our example. Different classes that have, again, different abilities that um, has a great art style and those things combine on a team to take out the other opponent. Secret Ponchos has that too. MOBA, top-down action with a lot of things called skill shots. If you've never played a MOBA, let me tell you what a skill shot is. For those of you that have never touched a MOBA, a skill shot is when you're trying to line up a shot with your mouse and then you hit the whatever action key it is that triggers that ability and you better pray that you aimed right because once it's off, it's off. It's not like um, an area effect. It has to be precise. Secret Ponchos has that too. So take all those things, combine them together in an Old West style with fantastic music and you have Secret Ponchos. All of the characters are sort of classic Wild West archetypes and the art style across the board is excellent. The guy who did the art for it, the guy who rendered the 3D art for it, I mean, they just did an excellent job on creating something that is visually compelling and doesn't look like anything else that's out there. That's the other thing about Secret Ponchos. It really isn't like anything else that's out there. So trying to find things to compare it to, to give people an idea of what it's like to play, is really hard. But let me tell you, once you start playing this game, it is hard to put down. As much as I love the game, all that being said, it is an unforgiving game. You have to be precise, you have to be right on. And watching two people go at it that are very, very good at it, it's like watching two Street Fighter champions going at it. It's so freaking impressive to see that. And every character's got these little nuances that just make them awesome. As you play through the game, you earn bounty or you lose bounty depending on how badly you suck. As you earn bounty, you actually gain skill points. You can make each one of your outlaws stronger. You put those skill points and you can spread them out however you want to into different things and find whatever combo works for you. Now, if Secret Poncho sounds familiar, it is because it did come out a while ago and it came out on PS4 as well. And a lot of people that I've talked to were mm, kind of iffy on Secret Ponchos based on that first exposure, but they, the team at Switchblade Monkeys has done a great job of refining things, really kind of going back to the, the drawing board, figuring out what it is the game does well, what they wanted to, to make it do better, and um, has produced something that I think people are really, really going to enjoy if they just give it a shot. And once you start playing the game and hear the music, you can tell the love and the passion that went into this game. And I think if y'all don't go check it out, I'm going to have to take out a bounty on your sorry, rotten, yellow-bellied hide. All right, dude. Well, there is five more Steam Hidden Gems. In the can, and so many more that we could do videos I on. I know. There's I great know. stuff out there that people just are not finding. So yeah. we hope that you've enjoyed these. <laughs> I know. I love doing these videos. Oh. The thing that, that kind of uh, hurts a little bit for me is that I'm mostly Mac. Right. And so not every game comes out on Mac. Like, for instance, there were some bullet hell style shooters that I wanted to include in yeah. here yeah. that I couldn't run. Right. Which is so sad, right? But the reason why I bring that up is because I am really interested and excited for cost excited for the uh, the steam boxes that are going to come out right right it looks like they're going to be really cool just the the whole idea and concept behind them looks right. cool but like with any other console that's been announced or whatever uh, I know. You, know, you don't know. There, there's a huge question mark because you could technically build a small PC, have True. it run Windows for about the same price. Right, right. But um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what other people think about it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, um, I'd also like to know if I decided to build my own PC. Again, keep in mind, I don't game in an office. I game in my living room. So I need something small and compact. True. Do you have some recommendations that, that you think I should look at? Or, or what do you think about Steam boxes? We'd love to know. We'd so, love it. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, dude, thanks for coming on, man. Absolutely. Always a blast, and we will have another Steam Hidden Gems at some point, I am sure. Oh, absolutely. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for subscribing, and take care. Josh and I have done other videos you may like, including a retrospective on the Quest for Glory series. Do you remember that back in the mid-90s from Sierra? Pretty awesome. We also do a couple videos highlighting his Blizzard collection. Yes, the guy is a World of Warcraft freak, and he's got some really cool stuff. So definitely check it out. Thanks for watching.